I'm Wendy Holloway, and you're listening to the Flavor of Italy podcast, sharing the very best of Italian food and wine, lifestyle, and people. Good morning. This is Wendy Holloway with the Flavor of Italy podcast. Today, I have a little story to tell you. Now, when I first moved to Rome, we lived in the very heart of the historic center of Rome. Very narrow streets, absolutely charming, but during the time we lived there, parking became impossible. So we decided, all right, let's move to another area of Rome that maybe has a bit more greenery and parking's easy. We found a lovely palazzo, which is a building, and uh, we had an attico, which is a top floor apartment in this wonderful building, and it had a huge, amazing, and wonderful terrace. So this area we lived in is called Perioli, and um, it's unclear what the name comes from, but it could either come from Monte Parioli, which is a series of tufa hills in the area, or it could come from the Latin origin name Peraioli, which is pear harvesters, as this area was once the site of pear orchards. In any case, it's uh, an area that ha- does indeed even to this day, have a lot more greenery and wider streets. There are two parks in the area, Villa Ada and Villa Borghese. And it, it was one of the first quartieri or areas of the city that was built beyond the Aurelian walls. Parioli began as an upper-class district in the early 20th century, and it was conceived as sort of a city promenade And according to the development plan that was drafted in 1909, the area of Perioli should only have had detached houses and cottages with vast gardens. That's the way they conceived that it would be built up. But then in 1922, that changed, and uh, apartment houses without gardens were included as the building archetype for the area. Now, during the fascist regime, Perioli was the residence of lots of high-ranking party and state functionaries, and today it's still considered Rome's most elegant residential area, and a lot of foreign embassies are located there, many, many, including the residence of the American ambassador, the U.S. ambassador to Italy and San Marino. Now, the apartment that we had with this incredible terrace overlooked the residence and garden of the American ambassador's residence. And this is not just a simple residence. It's huge. It's a city block filled with gardens and a pool and a movie theater and a delightful, gorgeous palazzo, which I'll tell you about in a minute. It was just a real pleasure to have our terrace overlook the Villa Borghese Park and also this residence of the American ambassador. Now, of course, lots of dignitaries and important people would come and visit the American ambassador. Back when our daughter was born, and she's now 35 years old, George Bush Sr. made a visit to Rome. And um, if I'm recalling correctly, I think he was actually even staying at the residence. So I understood that he was there, and I thought, oh, I'd love to see. Here I am, an American living in Rome. I'd love to see the American president. So I went, and I had uh, Julia, our baby uh, daughter Julia, in my arms, and I stood at the entrance waiting, 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 in the hopes that George Bush would then come through the gate. And he, of course, would pause for a moment for the gate to be opened. That's exactly what happened. And he was paused in this driveway. I was the only one standing there 
right on the side of the drive with Julia. And he saw her and he rolled down his window and said, fabulous or fantastic, something like that. And he was laughing and opened his arms uh, to say, she's just amazing. I was so moved by the fact that I had had this direct contact with the president. I went home and my husband was home and I was in tears and he said, you know, what happened? What happened? And I told him that, in fact, everything was absolutely fine, but that I had had this direct interaction with the president and that he had admired our brand new baby girl. That was such a delightful, uh, special moment and experience. And uh, since then, over the years, I've had the opportunity to attend different receptions and events within the Villa Taverna property, and uh, sometimes within the actual home of the ambassador, if not in the gardens. And it's really a spectacular location. Now, fast forwarding to the present, I'm now the president of the American Women's Association of Rome. And this year, just last week, we hosted our opening event at the Villa Taverna Residence and Garden. We have a brand new ambassador, Jack Markell and his lovely wife, Carla, and we're thrilled to have them here in Rome because it's been a few years that we have been without an ambassador. I went with the vice president of the American Women's Association a few hours in advance of the event to make sure everything was okay. And we had that special pleasure of being there with the house manager of the villa, and he helped get us all set up in the garden, and it was so quiet you would feel that you are not in the city of Rome at all, but out somewhere in a gorgeous location in the country. I have always admired this villa so much, and we were taken on this very brief private visit within the residence and shown some of the magnificent details of this location. There's a publication that you could actually get your hands on and look at. It's prepared by the Secretary of State, and it's the Secretary of State's Register of Culturally Significant Properties. This register was established in the year 2000, and it commemorates the country's most significant international heritage and promotes the preservation of the architecture of these properties. To be included in this publication, and there are 44 properties in the publication, There are six criteria that are used as the benchmark properties for inclusion. First and foremost, a property must represent a significant event or association with the U.S. diplomatic history. The other elements that are looked at are designation or acknowledgement by a host government or international body as a significant property, association with a significant historic event or person, important architecture or design by an important architect, a distinctive theme or assembly, having unique objects or visual features, and inclusion as of a significant archaeological site. Villa Taverna is, without a doubt, a property that meets all of these requirements. So the 15th century Villa Taverna was built by Cardinal Consalvi, who first rented the property to the U.S. ambassador in 1933. The villa and its historic gardens are filled with museum-quality art from antiquity through the Renaissance and up to the 19th century. The most important things that, that you note if you have the chance to stroll through the property and the gardens are a Baroque fountain, a 